Hello musicians, Bucky Dirtle here. Welcome back to part two of the video tutorial on Ryman by South Pole Modular. Now Ryman is a chord generator and uh, it's kind of complicated. So I'm, uh, I'm going over, um, I've split this into a couple of different uh, tutorials so we can cover some of these complex um, concepts that, we've, that, that are in this generator, this module. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, how the chords are structured. I'm um, also going to be talking about um, the uh, the controls and how these work here. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to also talk about how how we can control this with a uh, with a um, um, a very creative LFO called uh, Lisa U. So I'll, uh, I'll get to that at the end. So let's get started. So first of all, in the former, in the first tutorial that we did on this, we covered a lot of what, um, of how to wire this up, how to get the sound you want, that sort of thing. And uh, you should refer to that tutorial first of all. Now, just a little uh, recap. Um, <coughs> here's my audio out that I have right here, which is from the core pack. Uh, I'm using AS modules eight channel mixer right here, which is a nice nice mixer. I have um, all of the uh, the outputs from Ryman chord generator going to each an individual uh, VCO, and they're all along the bottom here. These are fundamental pack VCO ones, um, and I'm controlling it now with one LFO. Although you can control it with two. I'm controlling with one right now just for this demonstration now. Okay, so let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about these chords that are being created here. I'm going to turn up my volume a little bit so you can hear what's going on. Um, so I have my LFO controlling my, um, my uh, perfect fifth per volt um, and so that uh, it will move it around circles. Uh, let me just turn it up a little bit faster so we'll get and move it along a little. So you can see it's moving along quite slowly. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down so it just goes very slowly so we're we're well in control of it. I'm gonna turn in my volume a little peck here. Now last time I told you about how the ball moves along uh, this um, circle and gives us our different chords. Well, let's look and see how that works. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my parts down all the way to the bottom. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna initialize this. So I'm initializing this by right-clicking uh, on the interface and then choosing initialize. And that just initializes it, there you go. So my parts now are down um, to only three notes. So right now where it sits, it's playing a C, it's playing a D sharp, it's playing an F sharp. Actually, I'm gonna zoom in a little here just to make this even more clear for you. There we go, maybe even more. There we go. Now, um, so you can see we have a C, a D sharp, and, a, and a, an F sharp. Now, if I uh, increase the parts, uh, what will happen is, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna just make this a little easier. We'll do it into, into major minor. Uh, and I'll explain what the differences are in a few minutes. If I increase the parts here, as I go up, you can see another note was added. So now we have four notes that are creating the chord. If I increase it a little more, adds another note. Um, and another, and another, and there you go, and another. So I'll go all the way down to the beginning. Now, so, the, but the initial, when it's all the way to the bottom parts, we have three. We have only three three notes in a chord. Now, right now, I have this set to major minor. So what this does, um, and this is based on uh, a chord theory, uh, a, harm, a harmonic structure theory that I'll mention in the, the text. You can give you a link to read up on it. Um, and, uh, and and find out more information about it. But for now, 
it, the as the ball rolls around, it it would it would spell chords based on on where it is. Now the chords it's spelling are either major or minor chords right now. That's just the way that this is. Now if I switch this to augmented diminished, you can see that it changes. And instead of it using the the triangles as it is here for major minor, it uses more the law. It's in a string here, so you can see it uses F sharp, B, and D. And if I increase my parts, I'll wait for make the next switch. Okay, now I'll increase it. So you can see it's going along and fanning out over this arc as it extends. Because as it hits an A, it pops out on the inside of the A and goes around with his F sharp, pops out on the F sharp here and goes around. So it chases that, uh, it chases the, um, uh, the curvature uh, around this uh, circle of fifths. Now, uh, so it this is interprets it. It interprets it how how it plays the chord. Augmented diminished chords is along this line here. And I'm not going to get into the theory of what, how the chords are selected. Um, but and if you go to here, it's major minor, so it'll only be major minor chords. <clears throat> now, when we have another option as well where if I switch it to sus here, or suspended, what it does here, and I'll increase my parts, you can see that it just takes it right along, right along the fifths. So it doesn't matter, my switching this back and forth between major and minor doesn't make a difference. Major, minor, augmented, diminished doesn't make a difference here. When it's unsuspended, it just chases the fifths all the way along. So if I turn my parts down, it's only three notes, F, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. And every one of those is a fifth apart, of course, <clears throat> a perfect fifth. And as it increases, it adds a new fifth. Okay, so so that is, that's what that does for us. And you can, depending on what your musical tastes are and what you're looking for in your music, you may want a certain type of chord to be generated. Okay, but that's that's just for you to think about. Now, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it where it is here now on the suspended, and I'm going to leave it on major minor. Not that it makes a difference, but I'm going to do that anyway. And right now on my parts, I'll leave it at three for right now. Voicing. And what voicing does is this. Um, when, as I, okay, think about, um, inversions, um, right now, this chord, well, this chord right now, we're on D, A, and E, D would be in the root, A would be the next, E would be the next. If I was to bring this down, it would lower, it would bring the E down below, an octave lower, and then the octave lower A, so, like, if I brought the E down, be, if I brought the a down, it's A and the E, it's first inversion. If I bring the E to the root, it's second inversion. So it's the inversions of the chord. The voicing is the inversions of the chord. Let me try to demonstrate this. You'll hear the notes being added. As I bring it down, you'll hear the notes be added below. And I do the same one on the way up. I'll go up from here. So you've got a C, G, and D chord, which is C major. Okay, maybe that's the next note moved up. Next. So what it's doing is not adding any new notes to it. It's actually just uh, it's in, in doing an inversion. So it's adding, taking the note from the bottom and placing it at the top. Taking the next note that was at now it's at the bottom, placing that one at the top, and it's kind of leapfrogging all the way up through the the range, the frequency range. Okay, so now that's interesting. If we increase our parts, uh, so if I increase this now, so our parts now have quite a few notes here. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six notes. Now my voicing, you can hear, whoops, sorry about that. You can hear how the notes are leapfrogging. Okay, so you can hear how the notes are leapfrogging over. So it's all, it's changing the inversions of the notes of the in the chord. Okay, now this can be done, it doesn't have to be just suspended chords. Suspended are the easiest way to demonstrate it because it's all in a line in fifths. 
But if I do it with uh, major minor, it's the same thing. And if I do an augmented diminished, same thing. So you can hear it's it's just leapfrogging the inversions. So so that's how these parts work. Now I have to tell you that took me a long time to get to the bottom of how all this functioned properly. And it's really interesting the way it works. I, I do think that this is really exciting for your music. Um, but that is how it works. Now transpose. Transpose is very simple. Just it's just a transpose. You can see the way it's changing. So if we, I'll, I'll go back to the original setting. If you look at, if you look at a, the C right here, when I transpose it up a little, you can see C sharp, D, D sharp. You see, so it's, so we're transposing by, you know, it's just transposing. That's pretty simple. I don't need really need to explain much of that. Okay, so that is how that works. Now, um, we've been. I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit now. Sorry about the movement here. Um, I'm. We've we've been talking about how um, all of this plays out, all this works. And as I said at the beginning of ye of the last tutorial, this is a complicated uh, module, uh, but we can get to the bottom of it. Now, uh, something you may want to um, consider is uh, I'm going to move my um, Lisa U over there out of the way for a second, and I'm going to add back in here. Um, I'm going to add in another LFO. I just want to show you this. Uh, I'm going to scroll back over and turn my volume up a little bit. And now I'm going to go back over and pick a sine wave. I'm going to bring it into my voicing. Now. So you can hear the way that it's, it's affecting the voicing. So this, the LFO, the first one, this one here, is not changing the chord, it's changing the voicing of the chord. So you can hear that can be kind of interesting, you know? Depending on the chord you play too. Let's take our parts down. Anyway, you can get some interesting results here. Anyway, that the purpose of this tutorial is not to give you any musical really ideas. It's show you how this technology works. And then you can create some ideas of your own. Okay, so let me get that out of the way again. I just want to demonstrate that. Now, we have Lisa Yu on the left-hand side here. Now, uh, you've heard me talk about Lisa Yu before. I love this um, LFO. And if we delete that LFO as well. Lisa Yu is a great little LFO. It's got uh, some really nice variables. Um, we have, uh, I have a tutorial on the Lisa Yu LFO, which you can watch and learn. And it's really cool. I love it. It's very random sounding, although it isn't random. It's very random sounding. You can take um, various uh, outputs here on Lisa, uh, Lisa Yu, and you can use those to control your uh, the way the chords move through. Um, the way the chords move here. You can see I'm taking the X's combined, that's both of these guys, and those X's combined is controlling the um, major third movement. And you can see that will be across uh, between one circle to the next. The Y's are controlling the perfect fifths, which are the circles around the circumferences of these circles. Um, you can also change it around. You can go uh, divided by X's. And that will give you a different result again. Divide by Y, give you a different result. And you'll see that you'll notice in the tutorial that I showed you when how to use this one, this setting here will result in some very quick uh, craziness. So it's it's every now and then it kind of explodes into craziness as it goes right up to almost infinity, I believe. And back again. We can also make these kinds of changes, you know, X, uh, X's plus Y's. Or you can just take a, you know, just just take different parts and see what you get. You know, 
And you can control the variable, the, the controllers in here with different, um, with control voltages as well. So anyway, it's really infinite. So I like this. I like Lisa U for finding chords in here because it's so, it sounds random. It isn't random, but it sounds random. Um, and you can also use uh, Lisa U or like maybe you can take out, um, take out something like, uh, I don't know, the Y's and control the transposition. Or maybe tr control that, that voicing. So it might give you some nice, interesting results as well. There you go. You see, you can get some really pretty uh, things happening with by using Lisa U. So uh, yeah, have some fun with that. Okay, so let's make a quick let's do a quick little inventory of what we uh, learned today. So um, we were saying that the, uh, the I'm not going to get over the stuff we did in the previous tutorial, but in this tutorial we learned about the controls. We learned, uh, well, first of all, transpose is just transposing, and that's pretty clerical. That's pretty um, uh, straightforward. It just transposes. Um, parts will um, add uh, so many more notes to the chord or less, the minimum being three, the maximum being, what is that? Uh, one, three, four, five, six, six or seven. Um, and, uh, and the voicing is the inversions. So uh, this is the inversions of the chording. And again, as you rotate through this dial, it leapfrogs the notes over for the inversion. So the one that's at the bottom will now be at the top, and the one that's at the bottom will now be at the top, and one at the bottom now on the top. It's so it leapfrogs through your inversions. Uh, we learned about the major minor setting, augmented and diminished setting, and also our suspended setting over here as well. And how to control those and what they'll give us. And you can use your ears to figure out which, which works for you on that one. And then we can control all these things with LFOs. And of course, my lovely, which I love from Frozen Wasteland, Lisa Yu, LFO, very pretty LFO. And it also has some beautiful uh, graphics that we can use as well. And I can get some nice patterns happening up here. So, you know, I had it pretty on a, on a pretty um, straightforward type of um, uh, pattern, but we can have it do all kinds of funky things. So there you go. That is, that's basically it on the Ryman Chord Generator. I've reached the end of this tutorial series, which is only two tutorials, but it's a complicated uh, chord generator. And it's really cool. I would advise everybody to check it out because there's a lot of cool things it can do. And it will bring some new dynamic, uh, curious sounds to your music. So do it and let me know what it's like. I'd love to hear your music. I'd love to see what you're using this module for. So be sure to check with me, connect with me in the comments of this post. Or you can uh, connect with me on the uh, utopian.io Discord. If you have any tutorials you'd like for me to cover, or if you have any questions about any tutorials I have covered, feel free to connect with me. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, thank you for watching, everyone. I really appreciate your time. If you like this video, be sure to, uh, you know, connect with me or upvote to what you need to do. And if you, if you don't like the video, be sure to respond appropriately as well. Okay, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.